Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of Letters from Balconius Maximus. I'm Paul Dubay. I'm here today with a unique project that I did 10 years ago, and I decided it was time to finally present it here. This is going to be one of the few times that I go off on a religious bent, but uh, this experiment was just that. I wrote a sermon. I had been studying the works of Meister Eckhart, a uh, theologian from medieval Europe, at the recommendation of a man named Matt Capelli, who I never actually got to meet but did have some correspondence with, and I found it very interesting. And so he inspired me to write this sermon. And with that said, this may be one of the longer presentations I do, but uh, here we go. This is the sermon. Sisters and brothers, while it is true that you are unique, just like everyone else, it is important to see how the God of Holy Scripture is already uniquely embedded in your being and is continually manifested and renewed in the heart of each of us. One of the most powerful ways people come to know God is through speech. If we accept as an axiom, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of, Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, we see how we are vessels for the word of God. Keep in mind that just as people are free to choose between good and evil, right and wrong, people are also able to decide what they want to say or not say at any time. Using myself as an example, if I were to stand before you today and speak of the love of God, I am faced with no less than two paths. I can prosecute you from the pulpit for your propensity for profanity, or I can praise you for your prolific patience and kindness. I choose the latter, and for now, let us take Matthew's aforementioned verse and afford it daily application. What matters is that we see and hear how our speech is one of God's greatest gifts, a gift that empowers us to become one with the Creator and, at the same time, with all of the life that surrounds us. Paul's note on love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 13 clearly instructs us to speak with love, otherwise we are just a clanging bell. How are we to manifest that love of God? Do we do so with condemnation or compassion? Criticism or compliment? Arguably, I have presented a situational question. If so, in what situation do you find yourself? The answer can be ascertained by asking a few questions. Have we told our spouses, families, or friends that we love them? Do we make it a practice to tell them often, or do we take for granted the people closest to us, just like the air we breathe? Do we consider the thoughts that cross our minds? Or do we take refuge in the notion that no one knows what we are thinking? Our answers say very much about the disposition of our hearts and minds. The task before every person is to allow God to permeate as much of our being as possible. Yes, this receptivity to God can be done through prayer. Thankfully, just like there is more than one road to church, there is more than one way for God to present, pardon me, to be present in each person. The tongue is one such avenue. When Jesus asks us how can we say we believe in God who we cannot see when we do not love our neighbor who we do see, the power of his words are evident. The message brings us closer to God by striving to improve one aspect of our character, our spoken word. The message also encourages us to think about how we address each other. A helpful hint here is that if and when we err, let us do so on the side of compassion. While we show compassion to others, let us show compassion to ourselves for a moment. How often do we not consider even the most seemingly significant 
significant parts of our speech. Let us use a, an example that is very much at hand. We awoke this morning. Did our hearts say, Oh God, it's morning. Or did we say, Oh, good morning, God. In James chapter 3, verse 9, he really hits it on the head when he says, We use the same tongue to praise God and turn right around and curse our neighbor, our enemy, our perceived whatever they are. This is not the way it's supposed to be. Do you want to make sure that you are the master of your tongue and not a slave to it? Do you want the joys of being one of, of being one with God in heaven? Please remember, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open for you. Because the Father in heaven will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. That's Luke chapter 11 verses 9 and 13. Here, our loving God explicitly tells us how to come to Him who is already waiting for us.